realty income is by far the most popular rate in the world. It has over 220,000 followers on Seeking Alpha and new bullish articles are posted on the company every single day. But despite this huge popularity, the company's share price has recently crashed and it now trades at a historically low valuation. Is this a historic buying opportunity or should you sell before it crashes even further? Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you my updated thoughts on realty income following its second quarter results. But before I get into it, could you please do me a favor and like this video? It really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support. So let's start here by giving credit where it's due. Realty income is today very popular and a lot of the praise that it's getting, it really deserves it. It has one of the best track records in the entire REIT sector, having managed to generate 15% average annual total returns since going public nearly 30 years ago, it has also managed to grow its dividend in every single year, even despite the dot-com crash, the great financial crisis, the pandemic, the now recent surge in interest rates, nothing could stop realty income. You may be surprised to hear that it has even managed to outperform Berkshire Hathaway, which is the holding company of Warren Buffett. And if you look at the company's fundamentals, it has a lot of things going in its favor. It is today the biggest net lease rate with a portfolio of nearly $50 billion. In case you're not familiar with net lease properties, these are single tenant service oriented properties such as fast food restaurants, pharmacies, dollar stores, convenience stores, and so on. Back in my private equity days, these were some of our favorite real estate investments because of three reasons. The first reason is that typically the initial cap rate on these properties is quite a bit higher than in other property sectors. Back in 2016, we were commonly buying Aldi net lease grocery stores at a roughly 7% cap rate. If you added a bit of leverage to it, you could easily get to 10% cash on cash returns from the yield alone. Then the second reason why we like these properties is that the leases are really long at 15 years typically initially and then they also include several five-year extensions. Therefore, your tenant is committed to your property for the long run and the risk of vacancy is very low. As long as your tenant is able to turn a profit at your property, it's very unlikely to want to move elsewhere. Typically, the rent coverage ratios of these properties are at around three times, which means that the tenant is generating three times more profits that it has to pay in rents to its landlord. So again, the risk of vacancy is very low here because your initial lease term is really long, the property is absolutely essential essential to the business of your tenant and its profits typically easily cover your rent. And then the third reason why we really like net lease properties is because over the lease term you get automatic annual rent hikes. Typically these rent hikes are anywhere between 1 to 2 percent annually which may not seem high to you but they really add up over time because they are very consistent year after year and then on top of that your tenant typically is responsible for all property expenses including even the maintenance. Therefore this is real growth. You don't have to heavily reinvest in your property to grow its rent as it's commonly the case in other property sectors. Here you're getting a real rent hike every year without having to reinvest a penny. Realty income owns for the most part high quality net lease properties. It's widely diversified and therefore its cash flow is very defensive. Then it combines this relatively safe business model with the strongest balance sheet of its sector. It's the only net lease rate with an A- investment grade rating. It has low debt, long debt maturities that are well staggered and therefore it's not heavily impacted by the surge in interest rate. Thanks to this superior balance sheet, realty income is today actually still able to access debt at a cost that's inferior to the cap rates of the properties that it's acquiring and so it's still able to grow externally, acquiring new properties at a positive spread. So to recap here, realty income has a great portfolio portfolio, it has a fortress balance sheet, it has a scale advantage, and it has access to relatively cheap capital, which is a competitive advantage. All of that combined with its track record of steady monthly dividend payments has earned the company a cult-like following that only buys realty income in the REIT sector. I'm myself bullish on the shares today and own a small position in our retirement portfolio at Hyatt Landlord, which aims to maximize safe income. However, I'm still objective enough to recognize that realty income is not perfect, it has some growing issues and therefore it wouldn't be suitable for most investors. In some of my previous videos, I've explained that the biggest risk facing realty income is its very large size. The company is simply getting too big for its own good and I suspect that it's going to slow down its future growth rate, reducing also its future returns. And unfortunately, I think that the latest results as well as some recent news affecting the company are really providing additional evidence
plans that support this thesis. Realty Income just recently announced that it was going to make a preferred equity investment in the Bilagio Casino in Las Vegas. This is a new type of investment for Realty Income and the management issued the following statement. Credit investments are a natural adjacency to our traditional business allowing us to provide additional value to our clients while leveraging our core competencies. So put simply, what I think this really means is that Realty Income is stepping out of its specialty. Because of its large size, Realty Income now is not able to find enough investment opportunities in specialty niche anymore, and therefore it has to step outside of its circle of competence and now invest in other property sectors. A pessimist would here conclude that Realty Income is slowly becoming a jack of all trades. This is generally a very negative thing in the REIT sector because historically, the market has rewarded REITs that will be highly specialized with a higher valuation. On the contrary, the REITs that have invested across different property sectors and been more diversified have been punished with a lower valuation. This is because most investors want a REIT to be highly specialized and develop competitive advantages in the specialty focus. There's no benefit in wide diversification because investors can themselves buy shares of different REITs to build a diversified portfolio. So I fear that realty income is facing a dilemma here. It can decide to stay focused on its specialty niche and accept a slower future growth rate, or it can step outside of it, but this has the risk of diluting the quality of its portfolio. It may hurt its market sentiment and result in a lower valuation multiple. Realty income has clearly went with the second option in order to keep on growing at a faster pace. But even that has its limits. Realty income today owns about 50 billion worth of properties, and therefore every new acquisition has a relatively small impact on its bottom line. It's becoming harder for the company to grow and therefore I think that its future returns are likely to be much smaller than in the past. My verdict here is that if you're an income-oriented investor, you have a low risk tolerance, you're a retiree, then realty income makes a lot of sense. It's today priced at a historically low valuation with a 5.5% dividend yield that's paid on a monthly basis and this dividend should be sustainable. However, if you're an investor that's targeting higher total returns, seeking to outperform the market, then I think that realty income is a relatively poor choice. With a 5.5% dividend yield and an expected growth rate of about 3% in the long run, the company can reach high single-digit total returns, but not much more than that. However, some of its peers today are even more heavily discounted, enjoy faster growth prospects, and therefore they will make a lot more sense for total return-oriented investors. For this reason, we don't own realty income in our core portfolio at Hyatt Landlord, which is our main portfolio that's targeting maximum total returns. By the way, if you want to access my entire portfolio, feel free to join Hyatt Landlord for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. But so to summarize here, I think that Realty Income remains a great company. It makes sense for retirees. However, the company is now becoming a jack of all trades, which I think is a very negative thing. Its latest news are reaffirming this thought, and therefore I don't think that this is the best opportunity in the REIT market for most investors who are seeking to outperform the market. Thanks a lot for watching till the end. If you could please do me a favor and like this video, it really helped me a lot. Thank you so much at my next one. Bye-bye.